Hey, and thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you a really cool trick for how to create in-cell buttons and toggles in Microsoft Excel. Now, keep in mind, uh, this exercise requires that you have uh, at least a basic understanding of VBA, that you know how to use conditional formatting in Excel, and that you can write an if-then uh, logic state. And that, with that, let's get started. Let me show you first where you might use this. So here I have an apartment development model I'm working on, I'm trying to create a model that's as intuitive as possible, and so I'm using in-cell buttons and toggles. And the first is the button. So let's come up here to our capital stack, and, and essentially, rather than turning on my iterative calculation uh, feature, the Excel's iterative calculation feature, I have created a macro that iterates construction interest anytime that my actual loan to cost is different from my loan to cost assumption. Okay. And what happens is if this does not equal this, this button appears and all you do is you come up and you click it. It runs that macro. These now are equal. And so the button goes away. That's the first thing I'll show you how to create. The second is the toggle. Here I have my operating assumptions section. And you know when you're first looking at a deal, uh, you're just doing a back of the envelope analysis. And so you're dropping in operating expenses, r and it's just a round annual number. But as time goes by, maybe you start sharpening your pencil and you want to detail out your, your payroll or your administrative costs or what have you. And so I wanna be able to change this from just basic back of the envelope uh, underwriting to detailed. And that's where the toggle comes in. Right now it's basic. If I click detailed, it the heading for this section changes. A tab becomes available at the bottom called detail expenses. And more importantly, the button itself turns blue. That alerts me that, hey, detailed is on and basic now is off. Why? Well, the basic button turned white. I can go back and forth, back and forth. That's the second thing I'll show you how to create. So let's get started. Here I have just a basic workbook. I've created a setup tab, a multifamily development cash flow tab, and a multifamily operating cash flow tab. And the thinking is when the multifamily module is on, these tabs become available. When it's off, these tabs are hidden. And I'll have a button that essentially will alert you when the multifamily module is on, and the button will say turn off, and it'll be nice and red, and you click the button, the multifamily module will turn off, or essentially these tabs will hide, and the button will disappear. The next thing will be a toggle. It'll have an off and on. You click the off, the module turns off, and the off button uh, becomes prominent, telling you, hey, it's off. Click the on button, on button becomes prominent, telling you that it's on. So the first step is I need to create a cell within my setup tab here that tracks whether this module is on or off. I'm going to use this cell here immediately to the left of my multifamily module label. Now, right now, this cell is called A7. I want to turn this cell into a named cell, right? A named cell is a cell that uh, that location is fixed, uh, attached to that name, regardless of whether you add rows or add columns. And so here, this A7, I will change to, and you just come to this box in the upper hand left, left hand corner type in the name, which in this case, I'm going to call MF underscore module underscore on question mark. And that cell will track whether the module is on or off. When it's off, it's set as one, I'm sorry, zero. And when it's on, it's set as one, okay? Now, currently it's on, and I just manually dropped in the one. And what does it mean when it's on? Well, again, these tabs are open. So the next step then will be to write a macro, one that turns the module on and then another that turns the module off. And I'll be doing that using VBA and Excel gives us two options for this. The first is to come into your developer tab, click on your visual basic, that will open a visual basic window. But what if you don't have this developer tab? Well, you'll come up to file, options, Customize ribbon, and then this developer checkbox, make sure that's checked. When that happens, again, you'll have this developer ribbon and you'll have access to this visual basic. Now, within this visual basic box, you'll be able to create or write your own macros. But what if you don't have 
uh, the, the ability to write the macro. Well, I'm, I'm going to show you rather than writing it from scratch how to record your own macro. You don't need any coding ability necessarily uh, to do so. So rather than clicking this Visual Basic, I'm actually just going to record a macro. Okay, And when you record a macro in Excel, Excel tracks every step you make during the recording session. And then when you finish the recording session and you run that macro, the macro will essentially replicate those steps that you took uh, during the recording. So let's do that. I'll click the record macro. And in this case, I'm going to first turn the module off, right? Because it's on right now, our tabs are open. So I'll call this MF underscore module underscore off. And when, once I hit okay, I'm in recording mode. So any, any move I make, anything I write, is going to be recorded by Excel. So the first step will be I'm going to select the cell right here, this MF underscore module underscore on question mark. I select that and I'm turning it off. So I'm going to set this as zero. Okay. The next step is I'll come down to these two uh, tabs, right click, hide. This one, right click, hide, back here at setup. And then I'm going to move the cursor to D7, for instance. Once that's done, the macro has been recorded. I'm just gonna come up here and hit stop recording. And with that first macro recorded, I'm gonna go look at it. And this is an important step. You may not have a coding ability, but you can certainly read and, and it, it's fairly intuitive, uh, the VBA languages. So you'll, you'll come into your uh, Microsoft Visual Basic uh, window and off to the left here, you'll see modules. These modules are where your macros are housed. And in this case, I've got a module one, which is just blank, okay? And I have module two and there's the macro that we just recorded, right? So the name of the macro here, this in green, is just some uh, instructions. It's uh, not being executed. And then here are the steps. Notice we first selected range A7. That's that cell. We selected it. And then the selection itself, we enter this value zero. We then activated this sheet, sheets MF development cash flow dot select. And then with that selected, we set them to visible being false, right? So they're, instead of being visible true, they're visible false. We then selected MF operating cash flow select. Uh, we, we, we selected this tab, we set it to false. We return to the setup tab, and then we move to range or cell D7. And here's where we need to come up with some, some changes to the code. While again, you don't need coding, you don't need to under, know how to code specifically, you do need to be able to just read through this and, and make some changes. So the first is the range, right? We selected A7, but instead of selecting A7, which uh, again, if I were to add a row right there, then that cell would become A8, and but the code itself here within the macro wouldn't change, and now it would start selecting a cell that we don't want it to select. So I'm just gonna change this from A7 to MF, underscore module, underscore on, question mark. The next thing uh, then is that we will, so we are going to record the next macro, okay? So we can just go ahead and X out of our VBA. The macro is off, right? So we're gonna come up, record macro. This time it's called MF underscore module underscore on, hit okay. And then what does it take to turn the module on? Well, we select that cell, set it as one, come down, right click, unhide multifamily development cash flow, right click, unhide multifamily operating cash flow, return to setup, return to D7, stop our recording. And again, now let's go look at this code. Come to Visual Basic, and we see here's our off. Okay, now here's our on, okay? And again, we want to change A7 to MF underscore module underscore on question mark. Uh, it selects that cell, changes it to one. It then uh, makes the multifamily development cash flow tab visible, and then selects that tab, uh, makes multifamily operating cash flow visible, returns to uh, the setup tab, and then goes to range D7. All right, so we have our two macros written. 
Let's now create our button and our toggle. Okay, so first the button. What is the button going to do? Well, it's it will light up bright red and say turn off if the module is on. All right, so I'm just going to come up. I'll use H4 here for the button. I'll write some code or some logic if this cell, this MF underscore module underscore on question mark equals one, and we want this to output turn off. Otherwise, let's just leave that blank. Okay, right now it's turn off. And then we're going to use our conditional formatting. So again, with that cell selected, come to conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula to determine which cells to format. Click this little button here. And then what we want is we want to ask, does this cell, A7, or in our case, MF underscore module underscore on question mark equal one? Okay, so to do that, we hit equals MF underscore module underscore on question mark equal one. All right, so that's what this is asking. Or in, in other words, when this is the case, use this different formatting, okay? So when this is the case, you'll hit then what will happen is font will be white, fill will be bright red, okay? And now that's the case, right? But if we turn this to zero, it will disappear. Okay, one. Finally, we wanna turn this into a button. Right now, it's just some logic uh, using conditional formatting to change the, the formatting itself, the background and the font. To do that, we'll go to insert, shapes, we're gonna use a rectangle, and we'll make a rectangle the exact size of this cell, like so. That's close enough, right there, okay? With that, uh, with the drawing tools format selected, shape fill, no fill, shape outline, no outline, and now we have an invisible box, an invisible shape, on top of that cell. Now you wanna make sure, come up, select this rectangle, right click, come down to size and properties, and ensure over here under properties that the move and size with cells uh, button is, is checked. And the reason for that is if you were to increase or decrease the size of your column or your row here that affects the cell, you wanna make sure that the box sizes with that change. So let's just do that. Notice how the box size resizes. So with the box laid over the cell, we can now right click the box, come down and assign a macro to it. Essentially what will happen now if we assign a macro to that box is when you check it, it will run that macro. And this macro will be MF module off, okay? Such that when we click this button, turns the uh, module off. Now it disappears and there's no way to turn it back on, but that wasn't the purpose of the button, if you recall. The purpose of the button was to just turn off the module. So that's when perhaps a toggle would be a better use for this situation. So let's create a toggle. I'm gonna come to H7, I'll type on here. Actually, let's make sure that these are black font. Okay, H7 is on, G7 off. And what we'll do now is anytime the module is turned off, I'm gonna have this cell have a dark background and this cell a light background. When the module is on, this cell will have a dark background and this cell will have the light background. So I'll start with a base. My base will be the dark background. Okay, so let's choose, I don't know, uh, maybe this blue here with a white. That is whenever that particular setting is active, that will be the dark background, and the opposite will be the light background. So the next case is we're going to come to the first cell, G7, conditional formatting, new rule, and we're gonna say, hey, is this equal to one? Okay, now you can use A7 here because it's locked in, but even better, let's do, let's actually type in our named range, either work. So if it's on, then the M, uh, then the off will have the lighter background. So we'll come to format, and the background will be white. The border, let's set a border here, will be that color. 
And oh yeah, the fill the fill is no color. I'm sorry. And the font will be let's use kind of a gray. Okay, so it's a gray font. It's the the border and then no background. Hit OK. So now we can try it. That goes to one. All right. So there we have right. So on off. And we're going to do the opposite here. So let's turn that back to zero. Come to the on cell. Conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula to determine which cells to format. Click here, this equals mf underscore module underscore on question mark equals zero, right? If, if the module is off, then the on will have the light background. Format, our fill is that, our border like so, and our font will be that gray. And there we go. So we can toggle between that one and that one, right? So finally, we need to turn these into actual toggle buttons. So in the off, again, real similar to the button above, we'll come down up to shapes, grab a rectangle, make it the exact size of the cell, shape fill as no fill, outline as no outline, and let's as assign a macro. In this case, we'll assign the off, right? And then in the on, we'll do the same thing. Let's insert shape, rectangle, exact size. Oops, I uh, accidentally ran my macro. I don't wanna do that. Okay, make my, okay, and then no fill. And then outline, no outline, and then right click, assign a macro, and this is the on, okay? And now we can click it, turns it on, off, on, off, on, off, there we go. So here's your toggle, here's your button. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, that is how you uh, create in-cell buttons and toggles in Excel.